Hello, and welcome to Wellness Wednesday with 3W. Wellness Wednesday is sponsored by 3W Medical for Women, a nonprofit medical clinic offering free of charge or low cost reproductive health services to women in the Seattle area, regardless of income or insurance status. 3W does not profit off of the reproductive health choices women make. The information shared in this podcast is the opinion of the speaker or speakers. Medical information is not intended as individual medical consultation, but for general education only. Always consult your own health professional for personalized advice regarding medical decisions. And if you're in the Seattle area, consider making an appointment to consult with us. I'm Helen Nguyen, CEO and co-founder of 3W Medical for Women and the host of today's podcast. Hi there, Wellness Wednesday listeners. Welcome back to this Wellness Wednesday episode. We are we're recording and building on a past episode that was recorded in kind of our makeshift non-podcast studio. We wanted to remake this podcast because first of all, it was really informative and really fun. It's called The Vagina 101, What to Know About How to Care Down There with our very own co-medical director, Christy. Before we start this episode, though, I did want to make a quick announcement that we're switching from a weekly podcast to a bi-weekly podcast. And I think the reason why we're doing that is because some of the topics need a little bit more time to dive into and we don't want to just crank out podcasts for the sake of cranking out podcasts. We want it to be really thoughtful. And so every bi-weekly now we're going to be thoughtfully and intentionally releasing a new episode that has been really, you know, done more research, put more time in to make it sound really good. So so just that quick announcement, but We have Christy here with us today, and we're going to be talking about the vagina, which is always super fun. (laughs) So hi, Christy. Hello, Helen. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. So Christy, let's start with some basic questions or some basic comments about this wonderful, beautiful genital area of ours. (laughs) Yes. Because, you know, it's, it's always fascinating to me when a patient walks in and they have these really basic questions that I feel like... They should have been taught or forgot, you know, when their mom taught them or an aunt or a grandma taught them. But I really love this topic because it could save people a lot of heartache heartache or a lot of confusion, right? I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to reproductive organs Mm -hmm. for both men and women. Mm -hmm. And yes, I wish there was more education out there. I think a lot of people have questions and I love it when patients are bold to say, hey, you know, I have this question when they come in clinic for a visit because I love educating, as you know. Yes, yes. And we provide the time for you to educate, which is fantastic. Yes, (laughs) yes. So, okay, vagina one-on-one. So where is the vagina located and what are all the different parts that make up a vagina? Okay, so... I'm so glad we're actually re-recording this because I revisited our our previous podcast. And Mm -hmm. I think we group the vagina as just kind of the general female reproductive organ, Mm -hmm. which it is part of. But Mm -hmm. basically, the vagina itself is an exit, a muscular tube that connects the uterus and cervix to the external opening, Mm -hmm. which then lands on the vulva region of a woman. Okay. And the vulva is then made up of multiple parts, the labia minora, majora, the vestibule, the clitoris, Mm -hmm. and there's all sorts of different glands. So it's a very intricate area. Complex. Yeah. Amazing area of a female body. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And... So a lot of our patients come in and they have itchiness with their vagina or some sort of complaint about what's going on down there. And sometimes you, from what I've observed and what I've heard you say, it could be a variety of reasons. But to start out with, am I correct to say like sometimes it just, let's go back to how you even maintain like a clean ecosystem of your vagina. (laughs) Yeah. I love, I love calling it an ecosystem because it's amazing just the miraculous self-contained little system it is. We don't really need to do anything. Frequently I'll have 
women at maybe an annual exam ask me about their discharge and Mm -hmm. how can they get rid of it. And I always kind of laugh. You have to make light of it, but I'm so delighted that they're brave enough to ask the question. And I often just want to reassure them that you don't need to get rid of it. It's Mm -hmm. totally normal. It Mm -hmm. has a purpose. Mm -hmm. By way of gravity and exiting out the vaginal opening, there's going to be discharge. And Mm -hmm. this discharge usually starts in puberty because it increases with the presence of estrogen. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of little things that are happening just by presence of the estrogen. And then this continues on through the childbearing years. And then as we decrease in estrogen, as we enter in the perimenopausal or menopause stage of life, then this discharge will decrease. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the complaints about our vaginas is like, how it smells and how there's discharge, like you said. What are some ways that we can keep this self-containing, self-cleaning ecosystem healthy and not having to do much? You said like the detergent we use or people put perfume up there, crystals up there (laughs) (laughs) to, you know, clean, quote unquote, clean. What are some suggestions that you have on how to keep that area healthy and clean? So that's a really good question and one that many women have. Mm -hmm. So for cleaning and grooming, because I see this a lot now too, and I I see it go through trends where women will do waxing or sugaring or shaving. And I will often tell women when they come in for a complaint, it could be related to discharge. It might be because they have some sort of a skin rash that oftentimes is related to their grooming method. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of women will just want to get rid of the presence of discharge because they'll notice a fluctuation over the month. And Mm -hmm. so there's so much education that can be done because with the interplay of the hormones and as they change through a woman's monthly cycle, the discharge is going to change over the month. And I really tell women to just just minimize washing. So mainly water. Mm -hmm. You never put anything in the vagina, no fragrances, no soap, because Mm -hmm. it's going to offset that delicate balance, balance, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. it can change your pH. Mm -hmm. And the pH is going to change as your hormones change through the month. And they also change when you're exposed to semen during intercourse. Mm -hmm. Men by by nature have a more alkaline pH, and Mm -hmm. so that can throw off a woman's pH. So there's a lot of things, a lot of variables that can change the ecosystem. So I ask women to consider minimalizing how they take care of their vagina, their vulval area, We always have a nice little handout that we offer our patients when they leave in Mm -hmm. regards to this so that they're not disrupting that ecosystem Mm -hmm. and they're not setting themselves up for like a bacterial overgrowth or maybe a yeast overgrowth. Mm -hmm. And so those are the primary things that I usually tell them to do. Just water and just just external washing. Just like warm, just warm water in the shower. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not too hot, you know, but just your normal, just not excessively scrubbing scrubbing you don't or... need to really do anything i think the the more women focus on it or get hyper focused on it they they actually start contributing to the problem, to the problem. they become the mm-hmm. culprit mm-hmm. mm-hmm. cuz cuz it it's its own ecosystem but it can be thrown off if you put a different like a if you're washing your clothes with a certain really fragrant detergent it could throw it off it's possible. It'd it'd be really hard. It's really interesting. That just brought me back to a lecture that I listened to on rashes (laughs) ages ago. But usually detergents, lotions, soaps, things like that are going to have really low yield to have an influence on a localized skin reaction. I would say if it's getting into the vagina or the vaginal mucosa that's very delicate, Mm -hmm. then it would probably impact it. Like soaking in a bathtub with strong fragrances and lots of soap, not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Taking a bath with something natural like Epsom salt, maybe adding very sparingly some essential oils and being careful not to add something 
really strong like mint mint <laughs> or eucalyptus yeah or cinnamon yeah um Ooh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> keep it to lavender yeah and actually interestingly enough Essential oils all have different properties, and lavender actually has some antiviral and antibacterial huh. properties. But I wouldn't go. Don't I, dump the whole bottle. Don't dump the bottle. Just yeah, a couple of drops, yeah, right? Yeah, just just, a, a just so you can just smell it. If you can yeah. smell it, it's probably good. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. And just stick to the Epsom salt, or even just just bath water is fine. Yeah. yeah, I know the bubbles are fun, but not a good idea to. Soak the vaginal vulvar area in fragrances. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. And knowing a little bit of anatomy behind that, what's impacting that is the apocrine glands. Mm. And those are located in the groin, so completely mm. external, and the axillary areas. And by way of your secretions yeah. of sweat, for yeah. lack of better words, coming from these glands... They interact with just superficial bacteria that we have on our skin. Mm -hmm. And then we have our individual musky odor. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I think a lot of times women are trying to get rid of that odor they might smell, especially if they've been working out and mm -hmm. haven't changed their clothes or ran errands after they did aerobics or something like that. And the most important thing is just just general good hygiene, taking mm -hmm. a shower, drying off. I even tell women and men at their physical exams when they come in for an annual to just consider using a blow dryer mm -hmm. at a distance to dry the area mm -hmm. of the groin in mm -hmm. between the toes. You can even blow dry your ears because these areas just need to be kept dry. Now, you don't want to overdo it because right. too much of a good thing can be bad. Moderation. It's, exactly. Yeah. My favorite word. <laughs> Moderation. Moderation. Yeah. If it's burning or dr it, like super making your skin crack or something, probably stop blow drying probably. yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you touched on something that a, a, a lot of our patients, I want to say, bring up is smells. Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts about grooming down there to get rid of the smell or I don't know, there's sugar, like sugaring you say is very, I feel like is very popular right now. Yes. That and waxing. Waxing? Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. <laughs> yes. Out. I know. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine that. Yeah. I don't have any experience with either one of those things, but, but sugaring and waxing and just keeping things like really hairless down there. Does that contribute or take away certain smells or does it contribute to more issues mm -hmm. do you think good question i see a lot of this i've seen a lot of this in my nursing <laughs> career even before i became a nurse practitioner and what i would say is again this is where moderation comes in okay. i think it's reasonable to want to feel beautiful and groom yourself for example if you're going to go on a vacation yeah. and you're going to be on the beach in a bikini. Yeah. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I would say with everything that I teach, you know, I can only encourage evidence-based medicine that I know mm -hmm. and anecdotal reports from my patients and my experience. You know, you're balancing science mm -hmm. and it's kind of science and art trying to figure out what's best for people. Mm -hmm. But ultimately it's up to the patient. But I usually ask them to consider not going down to the skin. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is now, yes, in the bikini area, right, you might go down to the skin, mm -hmm. but shaving what you call the mons pubis, which mm -hmm. is the cushioned area that kind of protects the external genital area of a woman. Mm -hmm. There's a fat padding there and that's where the pubic hair grows. Mm -hmm. If you shave it completely, Everybody's different, and some women have really small labia, mm -hmm. and some have more pronounced labia, mm -hmm. and the pubic hair offers some protection to those areas of mm -hmm. a woman's body. Mm -hmm. And I've heard anecdotal reports from women that have gone through chemotherapy where they've lost their hair, mm -hmm. and they feel a certain increase in irritation. Mm -hmm. So I think it does offer some protection, and I like to think that our bodies were made with intelligent design. Yeah. And we really don't have to do a lot, but right. respect our body, take care of it. Yeah. And I try and teach my patient population that if you take care of your body 
and, you know, do things in moderation. Your body will take care of you. Mm -hmm. We don't really need to intervene a lot. I mean, Mm -hmm. sometimes we do, right? Luck of the draw, genetics, Mm -hmm. predispositions to whatever. Mm -hmm. But then you learn more about those areas. Maybe you have deficits because of your genetic background Mm -hmm. um, or your ethnicity. And you modify certain areas of your life to complement and carry you through certain challenges you might face. But when it comes to grooming, I think everybody would benefit from minimalizing. And oftentimes I'll have women, in fact, probably weekly, where they might have a rash. It could be razor burn. It could be folliculitis. It could just be localized trauma from the waxing because the waxing's kind of traumatic. You know, it's an application of a warm wax that might be kind of relaxing until they put the the material, the linen, I believe it is, and then rip off the hair. And some women will have welts. There's a localized release of histamines. And yeah, you can get little, little... Little bumps, right? Little, little bumps. I was just thinking of like a medical ingrown, term like ingrown hair. You can get ingrown hair just by way of shaving down to the skin, and then the hair turns inward as oh, it grows back. Boy. So that's something you're always going to deal with. Sometimes I'll tell women to try an electric razor. Mm. And then that can be less traumatic. Mm -hmm. Always use a shaving cream if you're using a traditional razor. Never share your razor with like a roommate Mm -hmm. because we have bugs on our skin. Mm -hmm. So we have staph all over our skin. And when you shave, you can have micro abrasions and introduce your own staph and get a low-level staph infection. Most of the time, it's not a big deal. Our Mm -hmm. immune systems function great, but it Mm -hmm. can be an issue. Also making sure you have a sharp razor. I don't know if I said that, but... Mm -hmm. I would use those as an alternative to waxing. Some women have asked me if they should just laser the whole area and get rid of the hair. And I really discourage them from doing that. And I know when we did this podcast originally, I had searched far and wide for some evidence-based information in regards to hair removal. And in contrast, I found an interesting article of a woman who, for whatever reason, didn't have a lot of pubic hair. I don't I, I don't recall if she had alopecia where you have an idiopathic loss of hair Mm -hmm. for not a well-known reason or Mm -hmm. a determined reason. And she was looking to have a hair replacement. So it's interesting. It's that, you know, the grass isn't greener on the other side. Yeah. So I feel like the bodies were meant to do certain things. And I think the pubic hair has a purpose. So I would just, in moderation, you know, carefully groom. But yes. you don't need to go down to the skin. That's my yeah. that's my opinion. Yeah. Because I think a lot of women think if I can just shave it all off or like get rid of the hair, then it won't smell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's not usually the case. Nope. That's those apocrine glands yeah. in the groin. Yeah. So and when I'm in with patients and and all of these wonderful questions come up, it's an opportunity for me to say, you know what? Just if if you're worried about the smell, you want to wash the groin. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the external area mm-hmm. where the legs connect to your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just more pronounced after puberty, during your childbearing years. And yeah. then it just tapers off. Everything tapers off and yeah. doesn't work as effectively yeah. as we get older. We just don't smell as much. Yeah. <laughs> and And what's the difference between a good smell and what's the difference between like Ooh, this is a smell that I probably need to come and see Christy about. (laughs) Oh, yes. I'm glad you brought that up. So I would say every woman is going to have a unique smell, and that's going to have a lot to do with how her body's made up. Again, Mm -hmm. it's the apocrine glands. The vaginal area does have a mild smell. It's going to be different for every individual. As clinicians, we pay a lot of attention to textures, smells, discharge colors because they can give us little clues. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to vaginal discharge, I often will teach women about the ecosystem of the vaginal microbiome, the delicate balance of many things, bacteria, yeast, fungi, and how everything is just kept in check really by way of the estrogen Mm -hmm. that increases this discharge and the presence of lactobacilli and a byproduct of lactic acid, which creates an acidic environment that keeps all of those anaerobic bacteria, yeast, fungi, Mm. whatever, Mm -hmm. in check. Mm -hmm. And so when she notices 
maybe a strong odor or a change in what she's used to, I mm-hmm. think it's worth coming in so that you can work with your provider to figure out, okay, what's going on. And one of the interesting things is, is if you have pH strips, which we have in the clinic, it's really nice to just take some of the discharge, check the woman's pH, because it's going to point to yeast or bacteria typically. Not Mm -hmm. always, but Mm -hmm. most of the time. And if she has a thick discharge without odor, typically, that's going to lean towards yeast. And if she has a strong odor, we call it an amine odor, which basically it smells kind of fishy. Mm-hmm. And it's very watery discharge. That's going to lean towards bacteria. bacteria. And sometimes she'll have both. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And it's just really uncomfortable because yeah. it's it's a change in discharge and it's excessive, whether it's thick or thin. And so it just, I would say when your discharge starts bothering you, because it's changed so much, or there's a presence of an odor, or you are having symptoms like burning, itching, or lesions, Mm -hmm. then you need to come in and be seen, be evaluated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what type of clothing should, what type of material, I guess, fabric wise, would you recommend that we wear down there? Like completely cotton, no spandex, no leather, no (laughs) latex. What I feel like the obvious qu- the obvious answer would be cotton, yes. right? Mm-hmm. I would say cotton, hands down, for underwear okay. all okay. the time. Obviously, I think you can't always get away from some spandex in the underwear. Mm-hmm. So, but basically, a cotton blend. Okay, the spandex component is going to be pretty low. And then what I tell women is after you shower. If you have a robe or a long shirt and you can run around the house in that, don't wear any underwear. Just Mm -hmm. let your body just kind of breathe. And certainly if it works for your household, don't wear any underwear to bed. Mm -hmm. Maybe just wear some loose boxers, Mm -hmm. maybe a nightgown. Mm -hmm. But that just allows the woman's body and, you know, the man's, to be quite honest, even with boxers, just to breathe more. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things that you can sweat a lot more in the groin area and that's going to promote good health well especially during the summer months Mm -hmm. right when things get really hot and we don't have ac in our homes (laughs) you get hot and sticky yeah you gotta let your girl breathe at night that's right (laughs) so is there anything else you'd like to to educate us about inform us about you know the vagina in general and how and how to best care for ourselves no, I think this is a it's a good beginning to yeah. revisiting this area. There's so much that we can talk about. I love just talking about it candidly. And yeah. when you think about different questions as we're discussing. Yeah. But I think just in moderation with grooming and cleaning and really it's just accepting your body as it is mm-hmm. and not trying to improve it. But really that starts with learning from maybe your mom or maybe Mm -hmm. talking with girlfriends or having a really good relationship with a provider where you can be educated and just reinforce, because that's what I'm doing in my appointments. I'm reinforcing with women that this is completely normal, vaginal Mm -hmm. discharge. It's called physiologic leucorrhea. You know, we talk about what color it is, Mm -hmm. creamy white to yellow, very little odor, Mm -hmm. the consistency changes over the month, and just to not try and alter what's natural because it just has a purpose. Yeah. I, I, you know, for myself personally, I was never taught any of this stuff. And so when I hit puberty and we had, you know, I had discharge, I was like, gosh, this is gross. Why, why do we have this? And then, you know, I got taught like, oh, you put a little panty liner on that on those, those days or those weeks that you have that and stuff like that. It's like, gosh, why do we have to have this? And you try to get rid of it Mm -hmm. as much Mm -hmm. as possible because you think it's dirty. Right. People kind of equate it to not being clean. Yeah. Yeah. They see it as dirty or offensive, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's a hundred percent natural. And I think when you can break it down, As to why it's happening at Mm -hmm. the physiologic level, you Mm -hmm. know, it begins with puberty. It's because of the presence of estrogen. And here's what else it produces, lactobacilli, Mm -hmm. lactic acid. And it's creating a barrier to actually protect you Mm -hmm. from invaders. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually miraculous. And the the panty liner is a great tip. And I tell all of my patients, just put a panty liner in. Even if they're working out and they foresee that 
They're not going to be able to go home and shower. If you have a little panty liner in your underwear, it wicks moisture away. So it yeah. can just be beneficial. Kind of absorbs mm -hmm. kind of some of the odor, some of the wetness exactly. that happens. And yeah. one caveat to that, I would just say using a panty liner that is really simple, meaning it doesn't have a lot of plastic on the backing because too much plastic will actually hold in moisture. Mm. And so I know we talked about this on the previous podcast, but Kotex Light Days is a great brand, whether or not a dermatologist actually reviewed it, but it is <laughs> dermatology recommended. And I think Kroger even has a, a, a a make off that. Yeah. But yeah. it's just simple cotton. It acts as a wick. Yeah. It, it helps you feel dry if you happen to be producing a lot of discharge by way of your hormones or whatever yeah. else is going yeah. on. So, so that, that's a, it's just so amazing how our bodies work and the vagina is specifically how it, like we keep saying it has its own ecosystem, which means it functions so well just on its own. And we just have to water it sometimes yes. <laughs> to, to, you know, not too cold, not too hot, but it's not asking for us to stick crystals up it or perf spray perfume or use a certain fragrant wipe. Right. You know, right. Um, I don't know what those wipes are called. What are those wipes called that you can get? Feminine from hygiene yeah, wipes. Yeah. That yeah. That I've, I've seen when I was younger, you know, and it's so interesting that we don't have to do a lot to keep it clean because it's self-cleaning in a lot of ways. So yes. thank you so much for re-recording this episode and helping us continuously learn more about our beautiful bodies and our genitalia and what not to do down there. So <laughs> thanks, Christy. You are welcome, Helen. <laughs> All right, listeners, if you have more questions about grooming, how to keep things clean, what to do when there's discharge, what to do when there's not discharge, what smells, come on in and make an appointment with Christy and or any of our medical providers, actually. And we can walk you through this, this these tips again and make sure that everything is hunky-dory down there. So thank you so much for joining us. And until next time. For more information about 3W, please visit our website at 3wmedical.org. That's the number three, the letter W, medical.org. From there, you can learn more information about the services we provide. Book an appointment or make a donation if you'd like to support our mission. You can also call our office at 206-588-0311. That's 206-588-0311. If you like this episode, please share it with others and consider subscribing on your favorite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, stay healthy and be well.